In 2015, Boeing was believed to be planning to launch a more capable, all-new replacement for the Boeing 757, rather than a re-engined version. At the International Society for the Trade and Transportation Aircraft Conference, it predicted that it would be a twin-aisle aircraft, similar to the Boeing 767, capable of using 7,000-foot runways like those at LaGuardia in New York. Boeing Vice President of Marketing Randy Tinseth said the company was focused on developing an aircraft with 20% more range and capacity than the 757. United Airlines had consulted with Airbus and Boeing about replacing its 757s and was awaiting Boeing's response, as Tinseth wanted to fill the gap between the 737 MAX and the 787. Ahead of the 2015 Paris Air Show, sales chief John Wojcik said Boeing had held discussions with customers and determined the market was large enough to launch an all-new jetliner, the first since the 787 Dreamliner was launched in 2003. At the show, Airbus CEO Fabrice Bregier estimated that Boeing would need to invest $10 billion to develop a 757 successor with 220 seats and a range of 4,500 miles, matching the capabilities stated by Boeing's Vice President of Product Development. Boeing Mike Sinnott Vinay Bhaskara of Airways News said Boeing's mid-size commercial jetliner will likely be rolled out before 2020 and enter service early next decade. Boeing has denied that the new aircraft is an upgrade of the Boeing 767, although a revised 767 could be a possible stopgap measure. Estimates suggest that the development and construction of a new aircraft could cost as much as $15 billion. In early 2016, Boeing's two major options remained a larger 737 MAX variant or an all-new 797 design. The new aircraft was the subject of a session of the 2016 International Society of Transport Aircraft Trading Conference in Phoenix, Arizona where major worldwide sellers, buyers and financiers of commercial aircraft meet. Airbus sales chief John Leahy said the industry has no need for a new mid-market airplane, since the A321neo is already for sale. In July 2016, Boeing forecast demand for 4,000 to 5,000 mid-market aircraft, leaving a market for 2,000 to 3,000 after accounting for the Airbus A321neo and A330neo sales. It identified the market sweet spot for the NMA as being a 200 to 250-seat twin-aisle aircraft with more than 4,000 miles range, but less expensive to operate than existing small twin-aisles. Boeing development resources were committed on the 777X, 787 to 10 and 737 MAX. By the beginning of 2017 the market shows interest in the NEM conception and was confirmed by Chief Financial Officer Andrew Levy, who corroborated the assumption that it would be a twin-aisle aircraft with two variants, carrying 225 to 260 passengers with a range of 4,800 to 5,200 moles. The new airplane was expected to have seven abreast seating, like the 767. The market favors single-aisle economics, and Boeing's challenge would be to achieve comparable hourly cost and price per seat while keeping twin-aisle capabilities. Competition to supply the engines would be intense, with Rolls-Royce expected to propose the Ultrafan follow-on to its advance engines, Pratt & Whitney offering a new iteration of its Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan. To assess where the middle of the market lay, Flight Ascend Consultancy looked at existing twin-aisle aircraft with fewer than 260 seats and found that these offered an average of 234 seats and have an average flight distance of 2,670 miles. With 60% of available seat miles below 4,000 miles and 82% below 5,000 miles to be competitive, the projet pricing would have to be between the 787 to Aiden A330neo at $100 to $120 million, base full life value, and larger single aisles at above $50 million. 767-300ER in its heyday cost just over $70 million. An elliptical cross-section could combine a twin-aisle cabin with the reduced cargo space of a single-aisle jet to reduce aerodynamic drag and operating costs, but would need more complex carbon composites instead of a simple cylindrical metal fuselage. At the June 2017 Paris Air Show, Boeing's aircraft development manager Mike Delaney confirmed the use of composites for the whole airframe, which would have a hybrid cross-section and bypass ratios above 10 to 1. The 797 were to be launched in early 2019, its design would be completed in 2020, with fabrication in 2021 to 22. Build in 2023, flight tests and certification in 2024 and introduction in 2025. With the 797 plan for introduction no earlier than 2025, and the 787 being much larger, Boeing could conceivably restart passenger 767-300ER production to bridge the gap, with potential demand for 50 to 60 aircraft. In September, Boeing created a development program office, 
and in November named their company veteran and 777X chief project engineer Terry Beeshold, without a role yet. On December 20, 2017, Washington Governor Jay Inslee formed a committee with Boeing Labor Unions, International Association of Machinists and Society of Professional Engineering Employees in Aerospace and local government economic development officials to lobby Boeing to build the 797 in Washington state. Boeing continued to estimate middle-of-the-market demand at between 2,000 and 4,000 airliners over 20 years. The conceptual design released in early 2018 had a 737 MAX-style tail cone, large 787 size cabin windows, a 777-style windscreen, a 767-door arrangement and short engine inlets. As the A320-A330 investment has been amortized, the A321LR or A330neo could be offered at a lower cost. The Venem 797 would have to offer notably lower fuel and maintenance cost. Airbus could react with an A321 stretch or an all-new design, and could use a new engine. As recent all-new designs took between 88 and 101 months between the authority to offer and the introduction, late 2018 to early 2019 launch would have implied a 2026 service entry. At this time, existing airliners over 30 years old will have been replaced by current models, leaving 900 aircraft aged from 15 to 25 years to be replaced, with two potential engines derived from existing units. Boeing continued to assess the market as 4,000 to 5,000 aircraft and was working towards a 2019 decision too, while taking measures to protect a 2025 introduction into service. According to the French National Aerospace Research Center, a cylindrical 7 or 8 abreast twin aisle has 20% more fuselage drag in crews than a 6 abreast, single aisle airplane of the same seat capacity. This is significant because fuselage drag is one third of total drag. However, an elliptical wide body can have an equivalent drag due to a smaller wetted area. Also, a twin aisle is more comfortable and has faster turnarounds than a single aisle. A cylindrical section is the simplest way to cope with the cabin pressurization hoop stress while an elliptical section is reinforced and heavier, less so with vertical rods like the Aurora D8 concept. In July 2019, Boeing stated that its priority was the safe return to service of the grounded 737 MAX, and that the decision to launch the 797 would depend partly on its confidence in the tools it intends to implement in order to improve development program performance. In September 2019, Airbus estimated the total addressable market for mid-size aircraft to represent some 2,000 to 2,500 jets over the next 20 years, and noted that it would be taking the early market in this space with the A321 XLR and high-density A321 configurations, and with the A330neo. By October, Boeing was studying a re-engined 767XF for around 2025, based on the 767-400ER with an extended landing gear to accommodate general electric turbofans. The cargo market was the main target, but a passenger version could be a less expensive alternative to the proposed 797. Some airlines and lessors touted as 797 customers had been pushing Boeing to focus instead on a narrow-body aircraft, dubbed the future small airplane, to replace the 737 MAX, and cast out on whether the NMA would be launched. In December, United Airlines placed an order for 50 A321 XLRs to replace its aging fleet of 757s, its first narrow-body Airbus order since 2006, but stated that this did not rule out consideration of the 797 in the future. Analysts Richard Abalafia and Rob Morris both believed that, although it would be a strong contender to replace the 767, the chances of a wide-body 797 being launched were diminishing in favor of a narrow-body aircraft that would compete more directly with the A321 XLR. On January 22, 2020, Boeing's new chief executive announced a clean-sheet re-evaluation of the project. As the company focused on existing products and the market shifted away after Airbus launched the popular A321 XLR in 2019, Boeing also noted its realization, following the 737 MAX crashes, that any new design must focus on the flight control system and how pilots interact with the aircraft. Boeing ordered a new study to assess the future market and the kind of aircraft that could meet that market, effectively shelving its current plan. Boeing was losing market share to the 200 to 240 seat Airbus A321 in particular, which targets a similar segment of the market to the 797. The delay to the 797 launch had already put a key part of the target market at risk for Boeing. The 787-3 is a abandoned variant of the Boeing 787 Dreamliner family, being equivalently sized to a 787-8 but was adjusted for shorter flights. By early 2021, 
Boeing was studying a shorter Dash 5X variant to compete with the Airbus A321 XLR as a 757 to 200 successor with a range of 5,000 miles. A smaller 225-seat variant of the previous new 797 twin-aisle design with composite wings and fuselage, it would reuse existing structures, systems and engine technology to target production costs comparable to single-aisle aircraft it would be powered by derated versions of the higher bypass ratio engines proposed by Pratt & Whitney, while Rolls-Royce PLC may be able to reconsider its withdrawal from bidding. Boeing could spend $2 to $3 billion a year for the development, up to $25 billion, as a potential go-ahead in 2022 or 2023 could lead to a late 2020 service entry.